So, we are back with more Everlasting Summer and continuing on with Miku's Rouse. So, in case if any of you guys missed it, yes, I already just started her uh, route by doing the first part uh, already. Uh, but I kind of did a little bit of uh, some forwarding a little bit on my own time to see where she's going to be popping up because she doesn't pop up all, quite a while and, you know, throughout this particular point. So, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of skipping. Uh, but there are a few little scenes that are kind of new that I will show that plays a little bit uh, with Simeon's route and a little bit with um, Eula as well, as well with Miku. Because I consider those three kind of like special routes, including Simeon's, even though his isn't really considered that. Uh, they just call it a regular route. But you do get a good and a bad ending in it either way, just like you do with the girls. Uh, Eula and uh, Miku are the only ones that have one ending, so they don't really have any other ending as far as I'm aware. And I'm, I'm looking, like I said, I have to walk through to do all this to the fans. But they're going to get ready to do this card thing, but it doesn't really matter here, so I'm going to lose it. Just let me do some forwarding, though. So we're going to skip this, and when a name comes up... Uh... Uh, it doesn't really matter who you lose to, but let me lose to Lena, so it doesn't really make a difference. Let's, uh... Now, none of these places really lead to anywhere, but, uh, the one with the infirmary is kind of funny, though. But, it's pretty creepy at night, as you guys can kind of see there. But it doesn't really lead to anything, as you can see. And again, uh, another choice... Like I said, a lot of this, you know, we'll keep looking for answers. Uh, going to take a look, I think, leads to Alyssa, so we're going to ignore that. Ah, this is a different choice. Okay, um, this is something that was a little bit new, so I'm going to include this uh, so you guys can see what this Russian is. I don't know what it says, so I since I can't read that. Uh, but obviously the top one has to do with Slavia and the sports club obviously has to do with Oyana, so I'm not going to pick that. So I'm going to go here, but it has nothing to do with a girl, so you'll see, though. But it might uh, be uh, not so giant after all. That was surely a hard decision to make. Indeed, is there any reason to spend extra time with weird chaps fond of early to mid 20th century sci-fi? But what if I managed to find out something useful from them? At least I could try. Centered on the threshold of the clubhouse, I hesitated for a while. Funny, all my doubts were swept aside. I opened the door and went in. Electronic and Shirk were bending over the table, studying something closer. Looks like they're standing straight up. Uh, that's not bending. <laughs> Hi there, cybernetics. Uh, how's it going? I was itching to behave as friendly as I could. Hi, we were waiting for you. How did how did I know you were going to say that? Electronic obviously intended to be called the Oracle. <laughs> so, what do you need? You'll help us to complete the robot. No way. I mean, I probably wouldn't really say it the way he does. Uh, I would just be like, what kind of robot? You know, that would be my curiosity about that because... There is something about this club that they're in that I, I would find a little bit of an interest in, somewhat, because it has to do with tech, and, you know, they definitely look like guys that would kind of be into that sort of stuff, but, you know, <laughs> but I mentioned previously, if you're new to this, that sure, I don't know, look to me, kind of reminds me of like a Ken doll. Some of you guys know it's like, I don't know. Somebody you could kind of picture Barbie going out with, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Just something that comes to mind. Even him, even uh, even electronics kind of look. It's kind of like the hair. It's like, oh, it's interesting, though. <laughs> That's out of my league. Don't worry. We'll show you around. The more you hate me, the more you will learn. I'm a hard man. But I am fair. Electronic joined in cheerfully. There's more to life than funny games, dudes. There's a topic to discuss. I've got a question, and you seem to have an answer. 
What's the question? He inquired guardedly. Do you think it is possible to travel in time? Why would you think such a thing? Electronics suddenly became serious. It's not only my idea. I took a book from the library yesterday, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. You must have read it, so, well, I'm thinking it over. Oh. Want to leap to the future? See how life is there? Nah, not really. I'm more interested in traveling back in time. Why is that? I don't know. Why not? Well, and what do you think about it? General Relativity Theory postulates the existence of wormholes, also known as tunnels in space. That look. Not really sure what that expression is supposed to be, but that's kind of a different expression. But his expressions are always creepy, I always say. I don't know. It's just something about him. It's like, can you imagine him as an axe murderer? He'd be like something. He'd be pretty creepy on that. I don't know. But you wouldn't understand it all anyway. I bet I won't. Anyway, I mean, anyway, in any such uh, supposition, we'll encounter a whole bunch of paradoxes. For example, if you travel to the past and kill yourself, then it would mean that you from the present won't be able to exist. Uh, you know, that kind of does make sense. Uh, I would, I would imagine, yeah. And what Shirk is also saying here... I don't want to really give any spoilers on anything or some plot relevance, but there is some plot relevance to what he's saying here, there. Because you figure Sebian's in the past, and yeah, there is one route in the game. Okay, I'm not going to say who. You guys would just have to see it on your own. Something happens in that when you do one of the bad endings. Um, Let's just say it's a it's one of the few battings I've seen besides I think um, Ilyana on my own and Slavia's that I've seen. There is one other person that I've seen, and yeah, it's it was hard to get through. Let's just say that it's kind of why I don't really include bad endings. So some of you guys kind of might have wanted to know, you know, even though some people can do them, you know, uh, they add a little bit of intrigue to the story and a little bit of drama. Uh, I'm just the type that likes to go out on a high note. It's just kind of how I am, though, you know. But there is something to this, though, in case some of you were kind of wondering, though, on that. It's kind of funny how they kind of throw this line in here, though. But it's interesting. But yeah. <laughs> well, it seems so. In a nutshell, it's all too unscientific. I see. But what if it would be possible? I mean, do I need some kind of a machine, a device, or a program to get to the past? Or it's enough just to fall asleep in a wrong place and wake up at another time in reality? I'm sure that modern science has no answer for your question yet. Oh, yep. You sound just like Popular Mechanics magazine. I've seen a couple of issues lying around my shelves, too. I see. It appears that coming here was a bad idea. However, if we... However, if we assume that known laws of physics are incorrect, or ultimately the laws themselves are correct, but we don't know anything about them, everything I should say, then it's definitely possible. Okay. Or it could be someday, for example, a more advanced race than humans that possesses superior knowledge of the th nature of things. Don't we kind of, are, well, um... Cyborgs kind of comply with that, right? Half machine, half robot, half human type thing, right? A part of your brain would, you know, think faster than a normal human, I would imagine. Less, you know, uh, but other than that, I don't know anybody else that would be. Not normal people. The smartest person in the world is still human at the end of the day, I always say. They could build a time machine or travel through time by some other means. Okay. So that means that I was thrown into the past by humanity's big brothers. <laughs> that would be kind of funny if that happened, but no. An interesting idea. And it seems reasonable if you think about it. And how would one find these, uh, the ones you've been talking about, if you're already in the past? How on earth would we know? This, these two reacted at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> they both laughed loudly. Well, thanks, guys. 
I was about to leave. <coughs> hey. I mean, hey, hang on. And what about our robot? I'm sure that everything will be uh, just fine with it. As I said, that was kind of a new scene since uh, I didn't make any choice to lead to any other female back there. It just kind of randomly threw this in. I don't know. But from this point on, there's not going to be anything going on relevant here. So, uh, I'm going to do some fast forwarding. So, prepare for all this. Because we're going to get to a bunch of different choices. So, I'm going to run away because that's Oyana there. This is going to lead to Slavia. Some of you guys are kind of familiar with this scene. Whoa. Okay. Alright, yeah. This is the dance, so... But there is one of those that, uh, there is something that I am going to include, though, that was not shown when you do, when you're following one of the other girls, since I'm doing Niku here. Okay. Alright, this is one of the new scenes, but maybe some of you guys could refresh my memory if this was something I included before. I don't really know. It seems kind of new to me, so I, I'm going to include this. There was a bus right in front of me. Just like the one on the first day. I was petrified. Oh, what? How, oh, why? At once I remembered all my theories about getting to this camp. I was struck by the realization that during these last few days, I had gotten so used to lo local life that I had started to forget things that the things happening here were really not normal. I just stood there and watched the damn Icarus, and I slapped my hands to my cheeks to be sure that it is not an illusion. The bus was still there. If it is here, then it is time to go home. Sign our pioneers. I rushed to the door. I came to my senses on the ground. My nose hurt like hell. I stood up and tried to understand what's going on. Then he kind of like... <laughs> seemed like I bumped into something. Yeah, maybe the ground? Like, is it like a bus that's an illusion and then that's... I don't know, unless you ran into somebody, I don't know. The bus was more than real to the touch. I tried to reach my hand out through the door. But there was some kind of an invisible wall. I was overwhelmed by a nearly animalistic fear. Fear of everything. The camp, its inhabitants, and this bus. How the hell did I even get here? What is this damn Icarus I can't enter? Why is this happening to me? Suddenly, a strong, unbalancing wind blew. I turned around and saw a little piece of paper under the wheel of the bus. Something was written on it. Oh, boy. Wow. This is why I included this, because uh, we didn't get a dance back there, so... But looking at this, I don't know. It's a little bit trippy, I gotta say. <laughs> You are here for a reason. The bad handwriting seemed familiar. I certainly have seen it somewhere. Now, the other reason why I'm including it is because um, apparently it also plays a little bit in Simeon's route and a little bit with Eula as well and Miku. So it's kind of like uh, because me not making choices with the other girls, um, this was something that wasn't included. Uh, when you do one of the others, so it's like this is something entirely different here. So pretty interesting <clears throat> It dawned upon me I took a small charcoal from the ground and scribbled the same sentence on the backside the handwriting was identical <clears throat> My head cleared. I have sent a message to myself from the future. That's it or not From the past <clears throat> Damn, I don't understand anything in any case, that was my handwriting. It certainly was not hard to forge it, but I was sure that I had written that message myself. Hmm. After turning that piece of paper over in my hands, I decided to try entering the bus one more time. The invisible wall was still there. I circled all around the Icarus, tapped at the wheels, checked inside through the window. Everything looked absolutely normal, but in reality, it wasn't. Heavy stones just bounced off the glass without visible damage. No effect, not even a scratch. I sat down on the curb and sighed weakly. If you think about it, that piece of paper hinted at something. And it seems that this situation won't give me any harm. Samuel. Hmm. Seems like the leader is looking for me. Ah. 
Interesting, what would she say about the bus now? Would she still insist that it, it won't be coming for a few days? I jumped up and ran towards the sound of Ogre Dimitrinova's voice. So, what do you say about that? I put it out triumphantly and waved my hand towards the road. Say what I want. She replied in surprise. <laughs> I turned around. The bus had disappeared. That's funny. As suddenly as it appeared, the cry of triumph died in my throat. <laughs> wow. It is time to sleep already. Let's go. But, but... What? The bus... Uh, there was a bus just a moment ago. The bus couldn't be here. She said calmly. I stared at Olga's uh, face. She was either skillfully lying or really didn't see anything. Probably the uh, ladder. That is it me who might be seeing things. No. You just might be the only one that can't see it. It can't be true. I already saw that damn 410. Quit lying. I said quietly. Simeon. I don't understand. Stop lying to me. There was a bus. It's you. You're keeping me here. Why? <laughs> wow. Damn, he's throwing her under the bus. <laughs> Why would she be the one keeping you here? I gritted my teeth but tried to speak with a calm voice. You're scaring me. Time to go to bed. <clears throat> I won't get anything from her as usual. Seriously, though, I really wanted to sleep. I walked swiftly past the leader, deliberately not paying attention to it, any attention to her. Hmm. I could fall asleep for quite some time, and only the crumpled piece of paper with the words, You're here for a reason, reminded me that the events of these three days were real. Okay. <clears throat> Day four. Yeah. You guys kind of see, I kind of had to skip all the way through here, and... I just included a couple of parts because Miku is not in day two, except when, well, she was a little bit, certain parts that I showed, but only the parts that you guys saw. Uh, she's not in day three at all. I went through the entire thing to see that, and did every little dip of thing. She doesn't show up anywhere, but she will be coming up here in this particular point because there are choices that affect her day four, so... But it also has to do with the Shurik nonsense once again. So we're going to have to go through all of that. So let me do some forwarding until I get to that. <clears throat> okay. So let me uh, make a... Whoa, what? Go back. It's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> Meant to hit... Uh, Okay, so, all right, so, well, we need to go to the bus stop, because that is the first choice we need to do. The bus stop seemed to be a fine choice. A strange thought came across me. Perhaps Shirk is in the same situation as me, and so he decided to run away from this camp, maybe uh, by the 410 bus. It could really turn out to be true if he came here by accident, too. I doubt it, although the chances of that are quite slim. You never know. But you never know. I just said that. <laughs> but that the bus would really come. However, I could hardly believe in that. Indeed, I spent a couple of minutes waiting at the bus stop. Made sure that there were no signs of Shirk or anyone else here. And headed back to the camp. Somebody rushed out from behind the gates and bumped into me. The impact wasn't strong, so I just staggered. Oh! <clears throat> Mika stood in front of me and rubbed her brush bruised forehead. Looks like she's rubbing her cheek. Oh, sorry. It's alright. It's my fault. I was going to the music club, but got lost and uh, thought about a new song. You know, to get up the lyrics and music. I hadn't realized how I got here. So you don't have to apologize. Her words per minute rate obviously exceeded the recognition limits of my brain. I made an attempt to retreat promptly. <laughs> Good lord. Sure, sure. Gotta go, uh, you know. Oh, wait. I wanted to leave as usual without having to listen to her, but Mika grabbed my hand. It's pretty, uh, grabby there. <laughs> her grasp gave me the creeps as I got a clear visioning vision of an agonized uh, execution by another rap session. What in the world? This guy, I don't know. You need slaps sometimes, Simeon. Like, somebody needs to wake... <laughs> 
give you a little dose of reality. Like, this girl's not all that bad, man. I don't know. Maybe she is. Maybe he's the reason he's trapped there. Who knows? Like, maybe coming with her is kind of like, you know what? Because we ignore this, you know, he can never go home. I mean, I guess if you look at it like that, that <laughs> could can be considered that. But Mika's my girl, so you're going you're gonna to get to with this girl, whether I got to force you there or not. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, he's always trying to, every time she pops up compared to everybody else, and she's barely even ever in a scene, as you guys see, he wants to run away, clear, it's like, just bolt off, it's like, I want to get as far away from this girl, <laughs> oh no, can you help me a little, please, just a teensy weeksy bit, that definitely wasn't on my to-do list today, well, you're gonna do it today, well, I'd be glad to, but it's, <clears throat> pretty please, Mika looked at me with such puppy dog eyes that my heart started to melt. She totally wasn't going to let go of my hand. And what help exactly do you need? You accompany me. I can't manage to compose on my own. I could sing or play. I can't do both at the same time. Even a virtue Russo has her weaknesses. <laughs> well, you know, I can't really play any instruments. Never mind that. I'll show you everything. Come on, let's go. We are going with Miku this time because if you go with this one, obviously it doesn't make a difference, but we are going with her. On the other hand, I'm not losing anything. However, she dragged me along with her. More like, I made the choice. You were going to get dragged anyway because, like, even if you ignore it, she does kind of bring you with her. But you can't get with her, obviously, if you pick the other choice because, like, I think she kind of is already aware that he... I don't know, it was a little bit resistant of her. That's my gonna guess on it. I don't know. <laughs> Probably nothing good will come of this. I always say some people are smarter than they let on type of thing, you know. But the only way to get her off of me is to wrestle my head out of hers. But that wouldn't be very nice. Nothing bad would happen, after all. You never know. Probably. <laughs> and he says that anyway. Within a minute, we were already standing at in the music club. Mika took a guitar. Here, have a look. She sat down and started playing. I have a guitar. But I bet you know, if you're kind of new to this, uh, I only just know a few basic chords. Nothing really. I don't know. I I pick it up maybe like once in a while. Messing around with it. But I'm not really good enough to be in some band or anything like that. Or, uh, But... On occasion, like, I'll get it out, like, you know, you get a little bored sometimes, right? And you, you kind of have, you turn on, you feel like turning on some music. There's times where I'll, I'll, like, pick it up and try to play along with what's going on sometimes. I've done that. <laughs> but that's about all I could do. Don't ask me to do, like, 50 million notes and all that kind of stuff. I'm not really, you know, anything like that. Just enough to, you know, just a few basic chords somebody showed me. And even when people were showing me, I could never read sheet music. I was never good at that. I was like, what does that even mean? It's like, okay, here, it's like, just show me where my fingers need to be involved. Like, because my pinky does not, I cannot stretch my, like, some fingers, some people's fingers, they could bend, you know, a certain way. My pinky does not do that because I kind of have, like, stubby kind of fingers you know not to really say too much about me but my fingers are kind of like that so stretching fingers for me is a, to a certain point is kind of a no-no for me and even if I wanted to move it I would have to use my other hand to move that finger uh, to a fret that I would need it to be on and it wouldn't really stay there anyway it would kind of it would slip off or something like it but so usually what I do is usually use like three fingers. I can do it like that. Just use my index, the, my ring finger or not the, the middle, the one that's after the middle and slightly before the pinky. So I use that as the slide and then, I don't know, two fingers for, I don't know, trying to hold down some notes because you could do it like that. Even though it's not really the correct way sometimes to actually play a note i look at it this way as long as you get a sound out of it that's it you don't need anything else that's all that crazy about it <laughs> you know i'm and i'm not out there to please anybody or 
you know, impress anyone anyway. I just do it, you know, once in a while, like I said, mess around with it for fun, but that's pretty much it. <laughs> I try to follow her hands. The tune seemed simple enough. It seemed quite easy to repeat. First song I actually learned how to do was Nirvana Smells Like Teen Spirit. Yeah. Uh, that's because you pretty much just strum the whole thing. It's just a few basic chords. That's pretty much all it is. And the song pretty much repeats itself like that. So it's pretty interesting. It's like ding, 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 ding. You know, like you guys know how the tune goes, right? I don't know. It's first, that's one of the few songs that I actually, actually do, you know. Got it. Kind of. Let's try. Uh, I took the guitar and started playing. That didn't really work out. Let me show you one more time. <laughs> she played much better than me. Looking at Miku, I wondered. Of course, she was a chatterbox. She was naive and clumsy. Good lord. However, she was extremely talented in music. Shouldn't that be a bonus then? I don't know. Try again. I managed much better the second time. Wow, that's much better. She smiled. It wasn't hard, in fact. Just repeat the same notes over and over. Just don't lose track. It's not on my command. Okay. Ready? Go. It was a song in Japanese. <laughs> I'll turn it up just a little bit so you guys can hear it because uh, the music was tender. I'll power my voice a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely Miku. It's kind of cute, though. I don't know. Frankly speaking, I didn't understand a single word, but Miku's singing was quite good. Yeah, it is. In fact, it was outstanding. She put her heart in every note, every word. Yeah, music probably is the very thing for her to dedicate uh, her life to. It seemed like it wasn't her who chose the music, but the music that has chosen her. half an hour presented Miku in a completely different light. Oh, thank you. Did you like it? I finally uh, managed it with you on my own. It's not so good. I either mess up with the words or miss the strings and it's just perfect with you. Thank you so much. You really have a talent, you know. Just to play like that without any rep preparation. Nope, it seems uh, I changed my opinion about her too hastily. Good lord. She ain't really all that bad there, Sibian. Give the girl a little bit of a break there. Man. <laughs> Thanks for the song. Gotta go. See you. Thanks, Pop. The rest of her words were left behind the door. Yeah, because he can't wait to get away from her. It's like, my goodness. How many times are you going to try to blow her off? Boy, oh boy. You don't do that even with Ilyana or um, Alyssa. And you're talking about characters that are a little more on the on the mean side you know, a little bit. You know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, lean on the wall of the club cabin inside. But then he does this even with girls that are kind of nice. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Mika's song was still playing in my mind. That's not how you get a girlfriend there, Simeon. You gotta think with that band of yours. Now, obviously, with these choices, they don't really matter here as much. So, let me, uh... Let me go to one of these places. It's not really gonna matter too much. Let's see. Oh, jeez. Good thing I fast-forward through that. Because I remember seeing that, and it scarred me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let me see the walkthrough here.
Oh, I think this Russian says, um, I think you'll look good in it. So we're gonna go with just asking. Okay, because other people are gonna get some choices here. Uh, Oyana, let's see. We got. Overdose of stolen candy, right? So, this is not a good choice for her, so it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> Alright, so let's forward that. This is the one that I was talking about. Some of you guys are kind of new to this, where I said, I wish there was something to this one. Like, you asked about the bundle, nothing came of it. You know, when you don't ask about it, it's just sort of like, I don't know. But you're not really supposed to if you're trying to go for her route weird how that works, though. but we're going to ask about it, but it never goes anywhere. Let's not give you this, because you want to make a bomb, girl. You don't know why you want to blow things up. Ah, so this is, a, this is relevance, plays relevance to me here. Ah, where are we at? Ah. And uh, we are not going to eat the apples, so that has to do with Miki. No. Okay. Even assuming that this is a normal apple, in any case, I shouldn't eat unwashed fruits. Just like that. I found a reason for my fear and put the apple away. It was time to go for dinner. <laughs> Along the way, I ran into an electronic. How's it going? Did you find shirt? No, still no sign of him. Don't worry. We'll find him. I try to cheer him up. Too much time has passed. I'll just keep on searching. What about dinner? No, finding Shirk is more important. He muttered thoughtfully. I left him at the crossroads and wished him good luck. <laughs> Pioneers crowded in the doorway. I quicken my pace, trying not to be the last one in the line, at least for today. And I was lucky, in the far corner was an absolutely empty uh, table. I took my dinner quickly and sat at the table. Tonight's dinner consisted of fruit soap and a pair of buns. This set surprised me at first, but the taste was actually nice. I concentrated on eating. Lena, let's go here. Look, three free chairs. Lena and Miku stood in front of me. Are these taken? Wondered Lena. No, take a seat. He's always nice to her. Ain't that kind of funny like that? Of course, I wish she were alone. See, that's what I mean. It's like, get rid of you, but I'll take you. It's like, why? It's like, what's wrong with her? Like, is it because she's more, like, I don't know, quiet? I don't know. I guess we all have different tastes and things, right? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, boy. As soon as Lena said that, Zenia jumped up behind her back. I'll sit here. There are no places left. She said, putting her tray on the table and sitting down, not even waiting for my answer. Sure, make yourself at home. I muttered sorrowfully. What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Jeez. He interacts more with her than he does with Miku, and she doesn't even have a route. What's up with that? To tell the truth, I wanted to reduce the whole company to just Lena. Though, neither Miku nor Zenyu were causing much trouble. No, but uh, you don't really blow her off as much as you try to do with Miku here. It's like, you'll actually talk to her, even though, yeah, she's kind of like, she's always mean. But, I don't know, Miku's just kind of friendly. It's like, I don't want really to get it, but, I don't know. Except one was too talkative and the other was too arrogant. But nevertheless, they were absolutely harmless, especially compared to some others I could name. Oh, seems like I forgot my key. Don't worry, take mine. I was surprised by Miku's short reply. Do you live together? Of course. Didn't you know? Together. Our cabin is the rearmost. Uh, I mean, the furthest from here. I mean, the last one. I wouldn't have been surprised if somebody told me that Lena lived with Slavia. Or with Xenia at worst. Even electronic. But Silent and Shy Lena inaccessibly talking to Miku as a pair. 
I always say, opposites can attract sometimes. You know, quiet, one person talks, the other doesn't. It could work. That's really a surprise. Not really. Maybe for you there, Simeon. <laughs> I don't know. Did you find Shug? It's strange as any is disturbed by someone's problems. No. Surely he is at the village buying cigarettes. Or vodka. She snorted. Village. At that moment, the conversation got much more interesting. Got a problem with villages. Zinya looked amazed. Maybe I do, only because you said it. I don't know. <laughs> you mean there's a village nearby? I think so. She said uncertainly. I looked at Lena and Miku, but they were busy with their meals and did not pay attention to our conversation. You mean you don't know exactly? Why should I care? Because you said it, that's why I know you care. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said this statement here. Typical Sunday line, but uh, we all know what that kind of. We all know what you really are saying. <laughs> you just would never admit it, will you? Then you stared at her dish. But there must be something nearby. I guess, you know, because you, you already you figured with Alyssa, I guess. Maybe that's why they didn't include Zenia as a route. But I find her more interesting than Alyssa. I don't know. I just kind of do. She's more, yeah, she's a little more grumpier, though, but I don't know. I think some of you guys could say, like, these three girls here, I would say, are probably the most interesting out of the group. Besides, well, I could, I'll throw one more in there, Slavia. I, I would say those four, to me, uh, I think, to me, are the most interesting uh, characters that you would want to do. Like, I don't know, just the kind of the way I look at it, anyway. I would, I would say Miku obviously stands out because of where she comes from. Obviously, then you have Lena. Xenia, even though she doesn't really have a route, you still get a little bit curious about her. And then you're sloppy. So, yeah. Oh, so. Listening. I don't know. Will you let me eat? Seems like I won't get anything from her. Though well, there is a chance that she really doesn't know. The remaining time was spent listening to Miku talking about some nonsense. I was just going slowly mad in silence. <laughs> that happens a lot, doesn't she? Obviously, the first thing I did after getting out after that was inhale a great breath of fresh air. Well, that was a pretty good part, so I can go ahead and make another part here. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. So, at least we did get to see uh, Miku a little bit. And you saw a few other things that was a little bit different. So, nice little part, but... I think when it comes to the shirk little thing, I think we're going to have to go alone. I'm going to see how that's going to turn out. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> so with that, I'll see you guys next time.